It was day three of our adventure. The plan today was to find our way down from Uncompagre National Forest and through Escalante Canyon. So we packed up our gear and headed out on the final day of this brief exploration. Good morning everyone and welcome to day three of Grand Mesa Uncompagre Exploration. bash on that plan, doesn't it? I guess we're taking a longer way. Let's get back up there to the main road and we'll decide what route to take. At least I, I don't think our plans are foiled, Mark. I think we just, GPS wasn't quite centered enough yet since we just started. So I think we just turned to earlier. Our road's actually right down, down below us here. So we can continue on and then we'll take uh, 500 up here and we'll be able to continue on up above Mesa and then down Dry Mesa Road. Or we can stick with uh, Lone Mesa Road all the way up through the potholes and still go our intended route. Alright, got our sword out on the map and know where we're headed. Nice little view there, isn't it? Yeah. View from up here, isn't it? Great views looking back to these little Virga rain not hitting the ground. It's nice. Yes, it is. I wish some of that would hit the ground right here. It's, although it's not been too dusty right in this area, it's been rocky. That's your foot green light. Yeah, both here and Grand Mesa seem to sort of share that common where you 
Really enjoying the traffic on this road. Very true. Let's rock up here.
This is Captain Smith's cabin. A Civil War veteran and expert tombstone carver, he built this. This is the second building here. There are at least three up there. They didn't seem all that shy, did they? No, they didn't. They didn't seem to mind us being there at all. Look over here on the right. <laughs> yeah, down there on the meadows, huh? We had a great time exploring Grand Mesa and Uncompagre National Forest these three days. It was a nice respite from the August heat gripping the nation. And we'd learned that there is much more worth exploring in this amazing area. We'll be back. Nice. Now, no swims. You're supposed to be setting a camera for the shot. Right. <laughs> Travis, taking one for the team. That's right. See if it works. I don't know how much battery is on here, so we'll probably have to hurry to make sure we get it. We can do that. And the stream pushes it over. Oh, is it? Oh, it's flowing. Got enough current, it just rolls it over. I think I. A little bit of sand here, maybe I can push it down into the sand. I don't even know if it's running. Push it. 
push the button, but I can't see it to know if it's running. Yeah, I knew somebody was doing something because I was here. <laughs> Just See what? I wanted to tell you, don't run over your camera. <laughs> oh, yeah. I tried to get kind of close to it. I, it looked like you were getting closer than I wanted to get. <laughs> and it stayed, it stayed upright at least. once again to my studio just doing the final review on the video and now I'm going to put the studio chat together that I'll attach to the end of this video and I guess that's what you're watching right now so I have several things I'd like to talk about and, and probably the first one of those is is going to be uh, the flop and <laughs> that is uh, exactly what happened on day one uh, when I managed to roll the Jeep off to the side a little bit I just want to explain about that turn there the turn is steep, and it, it's steep uphill, and as you approach, you can see a couple of things. Uh, you, you know that you're going to have to make a, a pretty sharp left turn when you get to the top, and the second thing you know is that the hill continues up on the other side. What you don't realize, and what you can't see as you approach, because as you approach, you're looking up at all you see is sky and the windshield, and you see the road off to the side. There's about an 18-inch deep ditch on, on, on the far side of the, uh, of the road. And so I managed to swing just a little bit wider than the road would permit and managed to get the tire and, then the, and the rear tire into that ditch. I'm not the first person to do that, and the evidence was the tire tracks, there were, there were a number of tire tracks into the ditch, and a couple of people had actually continued on driving and drove on out of the ditch. And uh, so it, it's just, it's a dangerous place. You just have to be careful of it. And uh, it, I have marked it on my map as a dangerous curve. That's exactly what I called it. Or dangerous turn and uh, if if you plan on driving that route if you ask me I will share the coordinates for that dangerous turn so that if you're paying attention you can make sure that you be aware of it as you approach it from that direction you go in the other direction you'll see it because it'll be right there on the left side it's no problem but uh, the direction we were headed uh, it was uh, it was difficult to, to see ahead of time the next thing that I want to talk about is, uh, I, again, I want to talk about a few books. And one of the books I was remiss, I should have talked about after the Mojave Road Trip. And, and that is The Mojave Road Guide, An Adventure Through Time, by Dennis Casimir. And I just want to say, if you're going to drive the Mojave Road, you want this book. When you heard Nick, the Englishman, uh, Jack's dad, uh, giving us narration on uh, about the history of the area and different features along the along the, the road the information he got by reading this book before the trip if you look at the Charles Wells guide books you're probably familiar with him he's got them for a lot of the western states and Moab and things like that even in his guidebook for the Mojave Road he says get this book there's also a map that you can get with it and uh, so it's a good map. Uh, there's a couple other maps you can get too, and but uh, but the book is a must. The map, yeah, it's a good map. The next book I just want to mention is called Hey Ranger, and it's by Jim Burnett, a National Park Service ranger, and uh, it's just a, it's an interesting book to use some perspective on what life is as a National Park Ranger. There's a lot of humorous tales in it, as well as some not so humorous ones. And uh, it's kind of appropriate because I'm going to talk a little bit more about Travis, who was with me on this trip. 
and Travis, uh, we didn't mention it during the video, but Travis is a National Park Ranger. The next thing I want to talk about, during the Utah Badlands video, we, uh, we showed a little bit of the use of an inReach and how it got a weather report. An inReach is a personal locator beacon. It's one of these things that if you have an emergency, you can push a send help button and they'll send help. And if you subscribe to their insurance plan, it's paid for. If you don't, you, you got a nice fat bill. But, uh, but it, it does also offer an ability for two-way text messaging. And it also offers in that two-way text messaging, you can send out a request for a weather report and have a weather report sent for what the, your location is. And so we use that, especially uh, as you saw in the video, uh, especially around the time when we knew we had some storms coming in. And we had used it the day before also, before we drove in through the left-hand Collet Canyon because we didn't want to get caught in there during flash flooding, obviously. There are other devices like that. Spot has, uh, I, I know there's other brands. I've seen l d listings of maybe a, a half a dozen or more of them. And uh, just if you're looking for that, you might want to compare the features of them and, and see which one would suit your needs. But uh, the Garmin inReach is, is what Matt uses, and uh, so you see that occasionally in the videos. The next thing I want to talk about is I'm going to buy a Jeep Gladiator. And I just want to mention, uh, if, if you've heard about that and you're wondering, Mark, when you get in that Jeep Gladiator, what are you doing with it? What's happening to your old Jeep? Well, my old Jeep is staying, and uh, I will continue to use my old Jeep as my primary overlanding vehicle. That's, that's the media plan. Although I've got some interesting ideas on how I might do a little bit of overlanding with the Gladiator. The delay on the Gladiator is because right now you can't order the Gobi. And uh, so the, the, the Gobi color. It was supposed to be available for order uh, in, you know, rumors in August. That did not happen. And so I'm waiting for that to open up. And now the rumors are maybe in October they'll open it up for ordering. So maybe by the November, December time frame, I'll actually have a Gladiator. Okay, the last thing I'd like to talk about is uh, I mentioned already that Travis is a National Park Ranger. And uh, he has served for a lot of years, a couple of decades, as a uh, public lands manager. I met him. He was the park manager for Roman Nose State Park, which is one of the premier state parks in the state of Oklahoma. And he, he shared a lot of ideas with me at my request about managing public lands. And uh, that happened during that campfire, and I have a lot of video recorded of it, a lot of audio recording of it. And what I'm going to do is take and just make a video about that. I don't know, I don't know how long it'll last, but, uh, but I've probably got it, 15, 20, maybe even 30 minutes worth of recordings. And I'm going to put that together. And if you're interested in, in a uh, professional's perspective on public lands and how we use them, uh, then you might want to give that a watch. I think you, you might find that informative. And So just would encourage you to look at that. So that's all I got. And I hope that you get out there, are getting out there, and having a good time, and staying safe and treading lightly. Good day now.